This is how everyone trains. Stability is crucial in defense. Stability is key in driving. This is how you all train now. No one can practice this way. You need to learn how to control force. We can't exert full force during training. Actually, exerting force is simple. Learning to control force takes practice. Even when he drive forcefully, we all need to control force. Can you explain to everyone? I've watched around. And everyone's first issue is touching the ball. Everyone likes swiping the ball. You might feel the ball better this way. But you're afraid to hit the ball directly. Normally, driving the ball requires a direct hit to penetrate it. Everyone misunderstands this. Some might think there's a brief concentration period. But if you drive like this, you're only limited to being close to the table and having a suitable rhythm. It's easier to borrow the force of the ball, but if you actively exert force, including topping underspin, it won't produce an arc. This hand can't hold the ball. You must learn to hit the ball head on. Always feel like you're hitting the ball from the front. Once you feel the ball on your hand, it briefly stays on the rubber and blade. Do you feel the ball on my rubber and blade? The ball briefly stops. That's the time to hold the ball. This way, I can control the ball. Just think, if you only touch the ball for a moment, how can you control the ball speed? Whether it goes over the net, depends entirely on the ball your opponent gives you. If your opponent's ball isn't right, or if the positioning and rhythm change slightly, you won't be able to drive the ball. And you can only drive the ball from this point. And you can't even drive the ball from this point. So everyone needs to learn to hit the ball head on. And another issue is, that everyone brushes too much, and doesn't make enough impact. There's no striking. Another issue is wiping. Then, too much friction. You must first learn to stir. As long as you hit the ball head on, it will bring some forward force. Then, in the process of pushing forward, we add some friction to the ball. This is how you can get the ball to touch the blade of the paddle. Even if you can't reach that level, you'll feel the time and sensation of the ball on your hand, rather than just friction like this. The ball lacks speed. These two issues seem common among everyone. Mostly, it's all about exerting too much force here and being hesitant to hit the ball head on. There's also the issue of excessive friction. Everyone might have a vague understanding of impact and friction, but they're not quite there yet. Later, I'll explain in detail the sensations of impact and friction, and how to adjust the feeling of driving the ball to a very comfortable level where you can drive the ball solidly and still control it. Everyone is either using zero force or 100% force. Learning to control force is the difficult part. Every one of you here now can exert force when asked to, but not everyone can do it consistently. The real challenge is controlling the force. We must not only be able to exert force, but also be able to rein it in. Just using 50% force, we also can drive the ball solidly and maintain a stable body position, and then continue driving the ball consecutively. That's difficult to achieve. Either you're exerting force very lightly, or you're exerting 100% force. Learn to control the ball. Experience it. Start by exerting 50% to 60% of your strength. You might feel your hand isn't working, and everyone's answer is the same. I don't feel solid when hitting with 50% to 60% strength, but you can concentrate 50% to 60% of your strength at one point. Here's another one. Don't use my arm. We also drive the ball solidly, and then hold it with our hand. As you can see, my body hardly moves at all. If like this that I can't control the force, this way, I can maintain my balance. Find the ball, find the position, and we can achieve consecutive shots. Look at this. If I can't control the force, and it's gone in the next round, 
because you can't control yourself after exerting force. Your whole body just goes out of control. There's no consistency. That's what everyone needs to learn. To exert force, concentrate that force. After exerting that force, to be able to control your entire body and rein in that force. This is something most people lack. Try hitting the ball against the wall. If you add friction, it's difficult to predict the trajectory of the ball's rebound. This helps develop the feel for hitting the ball. To address the issue of excessive friction during the process of the student's forehand loop, pin the video. Once you feel proficient, you can move on to the next stage, which involves single ball training. You can see on the left-hand side the data for spin and speed, which can help us with our training. Based on my experience, if the spin is less than 60, most of your returns will be flat hits without much spin. As mentioned in the previous video, once you become proficient, gradually step back. When you master that, you can increase the lateral range of AI returns, allowing us to train in finding the ball with our center of gravity. After this, let's switch to forehand position. Practice for 5 to 10 minutes. Don't mimic my movements as I'm also in the process of learning and correcting. You can borrow from my training methods. I've been able to distinguish between impact and friction. After two to three weeks of practice, I feel that my forehand has improved significantly. I use the Quest 3 for recording and Quest 2 for training. If you're interested in the equipment and the game, don't forget to use the link below the video to get a discount.